I'm a big fan of interior modifications when we're out on the road enjoying our cars. This is our view. And since taking ownership of this car in 2020, I've been changing and upgrading parts, trying to create my version of the perfect OEM Plus F30 interior. Some of these parts are just aesthetic, while others add functionality that wasn't there before. But if you're looking to take your interior to the next level, this is going to be your ultimate guide to F30 interior mods. Everything that you're gonna see also fits the F32 4 Series, and some of the parts are even compatible with the F80 M3 and F82 M4. In stock form, the F30 interior was somewhat underwhelming. In fact, a lot of people even thought it was a step backwards from the E90 interior. But luckily, BMW makes a really nice trim kit for this car that really elevates the look and feel of the interior. It adds textures like dry carbon fiber and Alcantara, and it really makes the car feel more premium inside. Um, the main trim kit includes the dashboard trim, the center console, and then the door handles. Now the kit fits both the 3 and the 4 series, but of course the 3 series will have the handles for the rear doors as well. Sold separately are the automatic shift knob, the gear selector base plate, and the parking brake handle. Now these parts are not cheap, but being genuine BMW, the fit and the quality is exceptional. Know that these pieces are not just veneers or stickers, these completely replace your original trim, clips and all, and best of all, the installation is super easy and requires nothing more than a set of interior pry tools. The three vent gauge is one of my favorite interior modifications. It fits seamlessly into your factory air vent and it can display about a dozen or so parameters. I usually keep mine on boost because that's the most exciting to look at in my opinion. And it can also read and clear engine fault codes which is super handy. With the P3 gauge there's a couple options to choose from. You can get the white digits with orange bars like what I have or you can do all orange if you want more of an OEM factory look. Uh, you can also buy the screen just by itself and install it into your existing vent or you can purchase it pre-installed than an OEM air vent. Um, honestly, save your money and just buy the screen on its own. If you can do Legos, you can disassemble this vent and install the screen inside of it. So I have the digital version of the P3 gauge, which simply plugs into your car's OBD2 port. Now it does need to be plugged in at all times in order to work. They do sell a splitter that would allow you to plug in multiple things at once. But for me, if I ever need to do coding or diagnostics, I just unplug the P3, uh, do the coding, and then plug it back in when I'm done. And by the way, these aren't just for BMWs, this company P3 Gauges makes these for most popular enthusiast cars. So I get a lot of questions about the M1 and M2 steering wheel buttons. People ask if they actually do anything or if they're just there for decoration. So these were sent to me by MN Laser Cutting on Instagram, and these allow you to change between Comfort, Sport, and Eco Pro right from the steering wheel. They include a wiring harness that connects the buttons on the steering wheel to the drive mode selector on the center console. And what's nice is these buttons on the center console are still fully functional. And this kit is 100% plug and play. There's no soldering or coding or anything like that required. You just plug it in and you're good to go. I think it's a clever use of the space on the wheel that otherwise just has these blank dummy buttons. Now note that these are only compatible with the M Sport wheel and only on cars that don't have adaptive cruise control. So they sell these buttons in either red or blue. I went with the red ones to match my interior, although I do wish that they had black for more of an OEM look. Um, and for those who are wondering, the ambient light still shines through them at nighttime. A recent addition to my 340i interior are these magnetic paddle shifters by JQ Works and Mad Trace. Now apparently these have been popular for racing simulations for some time and now they're available for real cars. As you pull the paddle back to shift gears, the magnet snaps and you get that satisfying click. Unlike these stock paddles which just use a rubber membrane. While it doesn't quite compare to shifting gears in a manual car, it does make for a more tactile driving experience compared to the stock paddles. The pedals are available in either matte carbon fiber or aluminum for a small upcharge. Now originally I went with the matte carbon and I mentioned in my installation video that I wish that I had got the aluminum to brighten up the interior and JQ Works was nice enough to reach out to me on Instagram and they sent me a pair 
and uh, the aluminum ones are actually more three-dimensional and I think that they're um, a little bit better looking and the cold feel of the real metal really just oozes quality. The installation is pretty straightforward and I think that anyone can install these in about 30 minutes. The hardest part was actually unplugging the old paddles because the harnesses are kind of tight. My friend and fellow content creator Jake, who goes by JD Cars on social media, developed this wireless phone charger that's integrated into the cup holder portion of the center console. He told me about this product that he was working on at a previous Keys event, and about a year later it came to fruition, and much like the M1 and M2 steering wheel buttons, I think it's a clever use of a space that's otherwise blank, and the kit even includes some installation tools which is a nice touch. There's nothing more annoying than trying to drive with cords and stuff tangled around the shifter, and now that we're using Bluetooth for music, there's even more reason to eliminate cords from the interior entirely. Not to mention the convenience of just being able to hop in my car, plop my phone down without having to fumble around for a cord, and this even accommodates my iPhone 14 Pro Max, which is among the largest phones currently. The charging surface has a rubber pad with a lip that prevents the phone from flying off under hard acceleration. Now I love mods that add functionality without taking away from the aesthetic. If you didn't know better, you'd think that it came with the car. The digital gauge cluster known internally as 6WB was the top of the line gauge cluster offered at the very end of F30's production cycle. The interface is dynamic and it changes based on what drive mode that you're in. Now because so few F30's were actually sold with these, this has become one of the most popular interior retrofits. While these have taken some getting used to, I do prefer the aesthetic over the base analog gauges that my car came with. Um, I do feel like BMW missed some opportunities to add features and functionality, especially given the flexibility in what you can do with a digital gauge. They do freshen up the interior and make the car feel newer, so I think it's a solid upgrade for those who are into tech and want a more modern feeling car. To be honest with you, this was one of the most difficult installations that I've done to date. Um, going into it, I didn't understand that going from the base analog cluster would be a lot more difficult than all the videos that I watched where people were going from the 6WA to the 6WB. I had to learn how fiber optics work, I had to find the three-way fiber optic cable that would connect the 6WB into the car's existing fiber optic loop, even coding it was challenging and ultimately I had to have Beamer Geeks go in and code it for me remotely. And finally, the centerpiece, the crown jewel, if you will, the genuine BMW race display steering wheel. This wheel is considered by many to be the holy grail of genuine BMW accessories, and like the name implies, there's a little display at the top that can show a variety of different parameters. You can see things like coolant and oil temperature, lateral and longitudinal g-force, and a quarter mile timer just to name a few. In fact, the owner's manual that came with the wheel is just as thick as the owner's manual for the car itself. Also built into the top of the wheel are these LED shift lights that have a graduated green to red color um, as the RPMs increase. Now in the initial setup of the wheel, you can choose the exact RPMs that you want these lights to come on at. You can also adjust the brightness of the LEDs in the display, and you can choose between metric and imperial units. The wheel itself is wrapped in Alcantara with this contrasting M-colored stitching. Now the actual display is kind of low resolution, but it gets the job done. Um, it's got really good contrast, so you can see it in all different lighting scenarios. And at nighttime, if it gets annoying, you can just hold down these buttons and turn the screen off entirely. The wheel is controlled by these two buttons at the 10 and 2 position using a combination of short, long, and double presses. It takes a little while to get the hang of, but after a while you'll be able to do it without too much thought. It's cool to me not only that this wheel even exists, but the fact that it's a genuine BMW part, I think it says something about BMW's understanding of their customer base. Now the installation of this thing was pretty tedious, even though there's no coating required, you're going to be repinning wires inside the steering column, repinning wires inside the footwell module, which takes some time and patience. If even one wire is installed incorrectly, the whole thing won't work, so I would say that this is an intermediate to advanced install, although if you follow my step-by-step -step instructions, I think you'll have no problem doing this one at home. Alright, links are down below, you guys already know what to do, and I am so ready for some warm weather so we can start shooting more content outside, or even to be able to come out here in the garage and be able 
able to just film right away without having to wait an hour for the garage to warm up. Uh, it seems like the last couple weeks we've been getting teased with warm weather, like it'll be warm for a couple days, then the next day you wake up and it's like a snowstorm. So I'm really sick of this. But uh, we're actually, my wife and I are going to be going down to Atlanta in a couple weeks for Import Alliance. Maybe I'll see you at that show. If not, I will see you guys in the next video.